You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Mind is a terrible thing to waste. Welcome to Enter Connected with your host, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Psychiatrist Rainer Gilmore will explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit, and how they have an effect on each other within our internal and external worlds. So welcome the host of Enter Connected, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you are listening to Interconnected. We are on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm very excited to welcome you to Interconnected, where we are going to be discussing the interconnectivity between the mind, body, and soul slash spirit. Just first, let me introduce who I am and why it's important for you to listen to what I'm saying. So like I said, my name is Dr. Raina Gilmore. I am a board certified psychiatrist that specializes in child and adolescent psychiatry. I am a native Floridian. I was born in Melbourne, Florida. Um, Grew up in the Tampa area. Went to college at Xavier University of Louisiana, XU, XU, all my XU fellas out there, XU. I went to medical school at Howard University College of Medicine, did my general psychiatry residency at Morehouse School of Medicine, and my child and adolescent psychiatry fellowship at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. And I am currently practicing as an independent contractor in Cincinnati, Ohio at several different clinics. So I'm very excited about this show. I see a lot of people who have lots of questions, and I'm here to answer any of those questions. Things that I like to do, I'm very interested in the arts. I like all arts, whether it be fine arts, classical arts. I love to sing. I can carry a tune. I just don't know where I'm carrying it a lot of times, but I can carry one. I also like to dance. I like acting. Um, Some may call me dramatic or extra, but that's fine. I'll take it. Um, I also like sports. I used to play basketball. Um, My position was the bench most of the time, but I did enjoy myself. And I also love to watch sports. Like I said, I'm a native Floridian, so I love anything Florida. So I want to talk about what I mean by the interconnectivity of the mind, body, and spirit. So the mind, body, and spirit are connected and interdependent, not independent. If one is affected negatively or ignored or neglected, the others will also be negatively impacted. On the other hand, if one is affected positively or given enough attention or care, then the others will be positively impacted. So it's important to work towards a balance between them. Mental illness has a biological component. In other words, it's not, quote unquote, all in the mind and doesn't mean that someone is, quote unquote, crazy. It is an actual medical disorder. It can affect you physically. So just like you have to acknowledge and treat any physical illness in order to be in good health, the same applies to mental illness. And please do not let your mental illness define you. I know a lot of people who like to do that and whether it be to make fun of others or just introspectively being down on themselves and defining themselves with what mental illness they may be afflicted with, that's not a good thing. 
everything works together. So it's important to create that balance. So this show will be focused on finding that balance. I plan to have guests from different disciplines to talk about that balance and as well as talk about my own personal experiences. I'm pretty transparent. So I like to let everybody see who I am. Well, hear who I am because you can't see me on the radio, but I like to hear who I am because I think that is a better way to connect with people if you know who it is you're talking to. So I'm pretty transparent. I will be talking about my professional experience as well as personal experiences. And I encourage people to send me messages and ask me any questions or anything that you may have as you listen to this show. As again, I said, I'm very excited about this. I want to answer the questions that you all have out there. I've already gotten a lot of feedback as to things to discuss. So hopefully we'll, I'll be able to address all of those things. Today, or to this evening, I basically am going to just go over the format of how the show is going to be, and then in subsequent shows, we'll focus on particular topics. I would like to acknowledge that it is Mental Health Awareness Month, uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and coming up this week, uh, this upcoming week from May 6th to May 12th is Teacher Appreciation Week. And on Tuesday is when they acknowledge the Teacher Appreciation Day, uh, Tuesday, the May 8th. So this episode is going to focus a lot on what's going on in our schools as we're entering the end of the school year. And as a child psychiatrist, I have seen a lot of kids who are kind of tired of being in school uh, and teachers who are tired of being in school, rightfully so, and ready for the summer. Um, and there's also been a lot of things going on with school shootings and things like that. So I want to take the focus today to talk about schools and what's going on in our schools. Again, I'm going to be focusing on how the mind, body, and soul slash spirit connect and Hopefully, I can get some um, inform, gain some information from the listeners, as well as provide information that will help you out in some sort of way. I am a jokester as well, so I do like to laugh. I do like to joke, and so there may be jokes here and there. I'm also kind of random, so keep that in mind. Uh, but I do have a structure for the show. Don't worry. Again, as a child and adolescent psychiatrist, I like to try and see each child as my own. I like to see the families as someone that is a part of my own family. So in doing that, I hope to provide more authentic and genuine treatment. And I think that the treatment goes both ways. I think we gain things from each other. So I think it's very important to know that with this upcoming Teacher Appreciation Week, it's very important to know that you can learn from just about anybody. It doesn't matter how much education you have. It doesn't matter what letters you have behind your name. It doesn't matter where you live, how you look, where you've come from, your past. You can always learn from somebody. So keep that in mind as you go through life. And I hope that as you listen, you, like I said, you will gain something from this and you will learn how to better navigate through this tumultuous times of life because life can be very stressful. I appreciate everyone that is staying up um, on the East Coast. It's after 10 o'clock, so I know it's a lot of people's bedtime. Um, it's fine too, but I took a nap today. That's very important, mind, body, spirit. Um, so I appreciate everybody who took the time to listen to me and Tell all your friends about me. Um, 
You can follow me on Facebook. LaShawn Gilmore, L-A-S-H-A-W-N is my name. Also my name on Instagram. And I have a website, mentalhealthpsa.com, E-M-E-N-T-A-L-H-E-A-L-T-H-P-S-A.com. So it's time for us to take a break. Like I said, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore. You're listening to Interconnected, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we are going to have a discussion about teachers in schools and mental health issues. We'll be right back. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore and you are listening to Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back. I've decided to start talking about this uh, discussion of teachers and schools and uh, mental health issues. So as a child and adolescent psychiatrist, I do work with a lot of kids and families naturally. And you know, we have to do better with collaboration in America. We're we're very individualistic and capitalistic. And I see many kids, so many kids struggling in schools due to a variety of reasons. And many of these kids are usually tagged or labeled or diagnosed with having ADHD, ODD. ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Um, ODD is oppositional defiant disorder and bipolar disorder and Many times parents are encouraged to medicate them. I'd like to take the time to say that medication is only a piece of the puzzle, if one at all. I can see the frustrations from all sides. So I can see the frustrations from the kids. I can see the frustrations from the caretakers, guardians, parents. I can also see the frustrations from the teachers, So a word of advice for parents or caretakers or guardians, teachers are not trained on how to deal with kids with mental health issues and special needs. That usually takes extra training or experience. So teachers are often expected to manage overcrowded classrooms with little resources and very little pay. And many have to learn by experience and find creative ways to manage a classroom with a mixture of kids with varying levels of issues. I know teachers personally where if they are seen as a very 
seasoned teacher or a very good teacher, they will stick all of the quote unquote challenged bad kids in their class. And then that's not fair because then they're overworked and they're stressed and they're not able to effectively do what they're supposed to do. So keep that in mind. While you may know your children's special needs and have the time and patience to manage them, teachers do not. And for teachers, I would like to stress that it is important to try to know about the students and the environments that they come from. Now, all of this shouldn't fall on you. It's up to the administration and the school system to formulate and institute policies and procedures for this. You shouldn't lump kids in categories and as much as you can try to know their individual situations so that you may be able to be the most effective in reaching and teaching them. I know this is tough and it is up to us as a community to come together and demand training and help in order for this to be instituted. Medication is not the answer for everything. We should try to work together in improving our school systems and education systems instead of putting money into things that are self-serving. Because remember, the children are our future. And, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes I worry about the children being our future as I look at these things like these Tide Pod challenges and these hangman challenges Um, If you're not aware of the hangman challenge or the choking challenge is to see how long you can try and choke yourself or hold your breath before passing out. Like children have died because of this. Tide pod challenges. I mean, I just don't even, there's even challenges with snorting condoms at this point. I mean, what is going on? Like, I don't understand. You know, I try to be very understanding. I'm, you know, very open to being adventurous. I'm a pretty adventurous person myself. But just because Tide Pods look pretty and look like candy, they're not candy. They don't taste just like candy. They can kill you. And I think that we need to do a better job in what we are exposing our children to. Again, It's easier said than done, but instead of trying to do things on an individual basis, we need to come together as a community to try and help these kids because they are the future. Put more money into these school systems. You know, there was the situation recently with the school shooting and in Florida, Parkland, Florida, and Again, I'm a native Floridian. There are some things that I am not proud of, though, when it comes to Florida. And if anybody says that they heard me say that, I will vehemently deny it because I love Florida just that much. But there are some major issues, and it's not just in Florida, but I'd like to use that particular situation as an example. Many people want to blame one particular thing when it's a multidimensional, multi-systemic issue. So in addressing it, you should address it from a multidimensional, multi-systemic perspective. You should address it in the school systems. It's interesting. A lot of schools in the inner cities have metal detectors and there's other schools who that are not in such urban neighborhoods that do not have metal detectors but at this point they're talking about giving teachers guns right so no that doesn't make sense i'm not trying to get political here uh, you know i'm not ascribing to any particular political party but The teachers need to be in the school to do what they're there to do, and that is to teach, to have that added responsibility of learning how to shoot a gun and, you know, realize they are in a traumatized situation as well whenever there is a school shooting that's occurring. So 
to have that added responsibility and then not give them any more money or extra resources, I don't think that that's a good idea. So, you know, let's look at trying to improve the school system and trying to improve the safety measures within these schools. Listen to these kids. Listen to them. They have a lot to say. In the midst of them doing these Tide Pod challenges and all of that, they do have a lot to say. And I find that a lot of times people are trying to ignore them. So you definitely need to listen to what kids have to say. We're going to take another break. Again, this is Dr. Gilmore, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the body portion of the show and how basic necessities can affect concentration, behaviors, mood, and all of that. Stay tuned. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of Essential Liquid Nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take Essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality based in quebec canada joanne is also a space coach using social media and skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world contact joanne charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 now is your time Hello, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and this is Interconnected, and we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So this next segment is going to focus on the body part of the mind, body, soul, slash spirit, which is how I will be conducting my shows. So I would like to discuss how the basic necessities such as getting enough sleep, getting proper nutrition can affect your mood, can affect your behaviors. Um, And so I really would like to focus again um, on the school situation and these kids. So sleep and nutrition are very important. If either or if either one or both are insufficient, then both mood and behaviors can be affected. So think about when you haven't had enough sleep or when you're hungry. Like, I know that when I haven't had enough sleep, you probably should not talk to me for a few minutes to a few hours because I'm not on it and I may be a tad bit agitated. So it definitely affects my mood. And, you know, when you're hangry, which means you're hungry and you're angry, that is not a good combination. So this is me as an adult feeling that way. So think about a child who has not had proper nutrition or who has not had a good night's sleep. You know, I'm not the nicest person in the world whenever I haven't had these things. And I'm definitely not able to function at my highest potential. 
you know, I find that sometimes when I am in the office and I may not have had enough sleep the night before, that is hard for me to concentrate on what is going on. And you know, that that happens with a lot of doctors and, and physicians and, and people who work in the healthcare field or in fields where it requires a lot of your time, um, especially when you're in the field of taking care of others. You don't want that because it could be detrimental and it could be dangerous. So again, that's us as adults. Think about how these children are doing. Many kids come from environments where sleep and nutrition are not adequate. You know, it could be because they're in a chaotic situation at home. They may be laying on the floor. They may not have enough sheets. They may be cold. Um, They may be out at all hours of the night. They may be scared. There's a lot of factors that go into not getting a good night's sleep. So instead of trying to find a medication to fix everything, again, very I'm very holistically minded. I think everything works together. So I am not a pill pusher by any means. And I see the necessity of medication, but I also feel like that there are other things that can be done before or at least as an adjunct to medication. So it's important to make sure that the basic primal needs are met. I remember the Jungle Book, The Bare Necessities. I do like to sing. Again, I did say that I can carry a tune, and sometimes I don't know where I'm carrying it or where it ends up, but I do like to carry one. So it's just the bare necessities the simple bare necessities forget about your worries and your okay that's enough um just giving you a little glimpse you know if you go to my website you can see some more videos just a little blurb anywho so if these kids are already coming into the classroom not having enough nutrition or adequate nutrition or what they're eating is not nutritious or healthy for their brain and their body, then that definitely can affect their behaviors. It definitely can affect their ability to concentrate and it definitely can affect their mood. So this is why I stress the importance of knowing as much as you can about the environment that these children are coming from, because that makes a big, huge difference. I see a lot of kids who are negatively affected by the environment that they're in. And again, they are given these diagnoses and these labels. And, you know, because the teachers in the administration don't really know how to manage it, and they're trying to manage other things and other kids, they tell the parents or encourage the parents for the for them to get their child assessed by a psychiatrist and to potentially get them on medication. Now, if there is truly ADHD and if there's truly a mental health issue, then yes, medication can help. But if you're not looking at all of these factors, then you're not treating everything. And if it's a lot of psychosocial things that are causing these kids to have these issues, and they're not being addressed, then, you know, it's all for naught and you're going to get not the most benefit from the medication. So as parents, caregivers, teachers, we we should start from an early age, um, from a child's early age to uplift our children. You should become as involved as you can in their academic and extracurricular activities. If you see that there is a deficiency somewhere, instead of talking about it on the side, on the sidelines, see how you can help. There are schools that have closets that are used as pantries. So I definitely encourage everyone to, again, as a community, come together and help these children because, again, they are the future get enough sleep, get your proper nutrition, and things could potentially be a whole lot better. 
We're going to take another break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. And we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we are going to talk about the spirit and soul portion of the show. We will be right back. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Hey guys, you're listening to Interconnected, and I am your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So, I'm getting some messages. Um, I'm excited about that. I've been told I have a good radio voice. I'm not quite sure what that means, and I'm not sure what kind of feelings that's stirring up in people, but if it's good feelings, then... May the force be with you. So this segment, I'd like to focus on what does soul slash spirit really mean? What is it composed of? Is spirituality the same thing as religion? And really how all of that makes us who we are and affects how we live our lives. Before I go to that, though, someone sent a question saying, what are some of the extreme behaviors that might have a child put on medicine? That is a loaded question. Um, What I see mostly is uh, aggression, uh, whether it be towards themselves or towards others. Also disruptive behaviors, whether it be in the classroom or at home or both. Disruptive behaviors can include flipping tables over, you know, yelling, screaming, again, aggression, um, stealing, lying. So these are these are many things that are asked to be medicated because it's hard to manage. So that's just some of the examples. Also, a lot of mood shifts and mood changes. On subsequent shows, we're definitely going to touch upon that, and I'll definitely have some guests to address that as well. So what is, but thank you for the question. So what is spirituality? Spirituality is defined as the quality of being concerned with the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things. And modern spirituality is centered on the deepest values and meanings by which people live and envisions an inner path enabling a person to discover the essence of his or her being. Spirituality gives the individual autonomy over his or her interpretation of the soul slash spirit 
whereas religion implies participation in a communal practice and interpretation of divine belief and worship. So again, with with spirituality and religion, they are not the same thing. They are intertwined and um, religion can be a part of spirituality, but they are not synonymous. Hopefully that makes sense. So I feel like when you talk about spirituality, you also have to talk about culture. And culture is composed of so many things. Culture is what makes us who we are. And it is affected by our environment, what we see, what we eat, what we drink, where we live, where we came from, our parents, our ancestors, where we go to school, our neighborhoods, the stores we shop at, all of that. I am a lover of the arts, like I said at the beginning of the show, and I think that the arts are a very therapeutic way for people to express themselves. I also feel like sports and activity is another way for people to get their aggression and natural uh, emotions out in a productive way. So I am a big advocate of the sport of sports, excuse me, and the arts. Big, 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 big advocate. Many kids, well, all kids are not the same. So in going back to the school piece and incorporating spirituality and culture into the schools, I think that our schools are more focused on many schools, not all schools, but many schools are focused on teaching kids on how to take a test and a lot of academic things as a, and they're not incorporating things such as spirituality. And there's a lot of controversy um, as to whether that should even be incorporated in schools. Again, I'm talking about incorporating spirituality, not incorporating religion per se. There is a, difference. There is a difference. So I think that it's important um, for kids to learn about different, what defines spirituality and different types of religions, not just as a theology course, not just in Catholic schools, not just in private schools, but just really to have that exposure. I do see a lot of kids who say that they are atheists or agnostic, or they have a lot of questions about religion because they may have gone through certain things in their lives and they don't understand why if there is such a higher power or or, um, a higher deity, then why would they allow them to go through these things? And I think that's a very important question. And I think that it's very important that the schools and people who are acting as educators and teachers, which again, can be anyone, you know, expose children to a a variety of things. So in the section of shows moving forward, we're going to talk about different religions. We're going to talk about different aspects of spirituality, different aspects of culture, music, sports, um, poetry, writing, journaling, all of that kinds of things, because all of those things are very important in building a healthy psyche. And with a healthy psyche, you are healthy Overall, a mind the mind is a terrible thing to waste. So remember, the mind, body, and spirit are connected and are interdependent, not independent. I also would like to say that you can't pray away, eat away, sleep away, exercise away, smoke slash inject slash snort slash drink slash inhale slash ingest away, medicate away, Act slash sing slash dance slash play music slash play away, draw slash paint away, cut, burn, pick, scratch away, therapy away, shoot or kill away, rob away, talk away, think away, educate away, read away, watch away, reality TV away, love and hip hop, mm -mm. video game away, fight away, or anything else away your problems. While all of these things may help and some are essential for a healthy life and psyche, one must look within and constantly work on oneself 
in order to become a better person overall, spirituality. It's time for us to take another break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And when we come back, we're going to talk about something that's one of my favorite things to talk about, and that's about meditation and mindfulness. Stay tuned. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. You are listening to Interconnected. I am, I am your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So this segment, I'd like to focus on talking about meditation and mindfulness. I did have a question as to, I guess, the difference between prayer versus meditation. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to... That's a hard question because some people may see prayer as a form of meditation. It's just a matter of you looking within yourself and kind of meditation is basically focusing on living in the moment. And when you're praying, a lot of times you're trying to pray for something, either for something to come or to get over something that's happened in the past. Whereas meditation is you're trying to focus on staying where you are in the moment. So hopefully that answers that question. So I love joy. Okay. If anybody knows me, they know that I just love joy. A lot of the, a lot of times I like to ask my patients and people that choose to continue to listen to me what the difference between happiness and joy is. And to me, I think that joy, well, happiness usually comes from external things. So money, sex, chocolate, more sex, more chocolate, alcohol, things, physical, material things. So in taking those things away, the happiness usually goes with it. With joy, that's more of an internal process. So joy comes from within. So when you have all of these things that are taken away, that the happiness is connected to, you can still pull from that joy because that comes from within. And nobody can take that away from you. Now, as you grow and you get older, there will be different things that bring you joy. What brings me joy is the arts, sports, peace and serenity, family, 
friends, fellowship, all of those things bring me joy. So if any of those things were to be taken away from me, while I would be devastated, I would try to pull from other things that bring me joy and to, in order to make it through. So hopefully that makes sense. There is a practice called in, in therapy or a modality in therapy called dialectical behavioral therapy or DBT. And I think that regardless of whether you are mentally ill or whatever, I think you can gain something from that. So one of the major major parts of DBT is mindfulness. And again, that is living in the moment. So in living in the moment, you recenter yourself and you say, okay, this is what's happening right now. Because if you are thinking about too much of what happened in the past, then you're going to be stuck there. If you're thinking too much about what you perceive the future is going to be, you're going to be stressed, you're going to be anxious. The same result is going to be anxiety, stress, depression. But if you try and focus on what's going on in the here and now, gain from the past so that you can make adjustments so that you can work towards a better future, but focusing on the here and now, that's very important. And that's what mindfulness teaches us. I do like to meditate every day. There are a lot of meditation apps out there. I like to use the Calm app. There's also a Headspace. Insight Timer, I think, is another one. And so this morning when I was listening to my meditation, I they talked about, again, Teacher Appreciation Week coming up, and Carl Young, Carl Young had a quote that said, one looks back with appreciation to the brilliant teachers, but with gratitude to those who touched our human feelings. So, again, anybody can teach us. You can learn from anybody. And the ones that really touch our soul, our spirit, and our feelings and our emotions are the ones that usually make a bigger impact, regardless of how many letters they have behind their name or how much education that they have. So many people may say that different things um, provide them peace and serenity, again, whether it be uh, praying, chocolate, more chocolate, sex, more sex, alcohol, more alcohol. Some people may think that that's meditation. I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to touch that. If that's what you do and you're being safe, you go for it. So I really want to focus on you coming into that happy place and what brings you to that happy place as long as it's healthy and it's not hurting anybody else or hurting yourself, then go ahead and and may the force be with you. And hopefully my voice can make you be put into that calm space since I have been alerted that I have such a calm, soothing voice. I do not want any phone calls, though, for any marriage proposals or anything like that because um, I am spoken for and that's kind of weird, okay? You don't even know me. So, anywho, please look up these meditation apps because they really can be a lifesaver for you. Again, there is a strong connection between the mind and the rest of the body. So that is why it is important that we acknowledge and take care of our mental health. Everyone has a role in life. Take time to listen, hear, and receive what others have to say. Just because someone is a child doesn't mean you as an educated adult cannot learn from him or her. Just because someone is homeless doesn't mean you as a person with a mansion cannot learn from him or her. Just because a person has a mental illness doesn't mean that you as a quote-unquote normal, whatever that is, person, cannot learn from him or her. Just because someone is unemployed or a janitor and has a job that is seen by society as a quote unquote lowly job, does it mean a doctor, a lawyer, a CEO, or a billionaire cannot learn from him or her? You can learn from anyone. So take the time to learn from all of those people around you. 
And I'm going to leave you with this, the serenity prayer. I love the serenity prayer. And the serenity prayer says this, God grant me the serenity to change the things that I can, I mean, to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can't, can, sorry, and the wisdom to know the difference. I'm going to need to work on that because that was kind of horrible. I probably need to meditate and do some of those other things that I talked about to calm myself down and probably listen to myself some more so that I can feel calmer and listening to my soothing voice. The serenity prayer is very important and I'm going to go on break now because I need to take a break and I'm going to get that serenity prayer right. So again, this is Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. And when we come back, we're going to have a wrap up, and I'm going to get that Serenity Prayer right. Promise. Stay tuned. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Okay, so I have found the serenity prayer. I'm going to read it. I'm ready. I've had my alcohol. I've had my chocolate. I've had my sex. I've had, I'm just kidding. I haven't had any of those things. Probably need them. Okay. Now the serenity prayer. So many of us know the serenity prayer as God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. However, that's not the original version. The original version is as follows. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace. Taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. That I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. Now, if you're not a religious person, you can still apply this to your life. You just would take out God. But again, it's really about living in the moment and accepting things that you cannot change and having the courage to change the things that you can and being able to know which is which, you know? So I did get that right. I know people are going to clown me, but that's okay. Cause this is my first show. 
Anywho, um, as I'm wrapping up, I'd just like to, again, stress that the mind, body, and spirit are connected and interdependent, not independent. If one is affected negatively or ignored or neglected, the others will also be negatively impacted. On the other hand, if one is affected positively or given enough attention care to or care to, then the others will be positively impacted. Thus, it is important to work towards a balance between them. Thank everybody for their time. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for your questions. And I hope to have a lot more listeners and it's going to be a wonderful show. We're going to touch on a lot of topics. We're going to have guests. So please stay tuned. We're going to be here every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Again, you can follow me on Facebook, LaShawn Gilmore. LaShawn is L-A-S-H-A-W-N. Gilmore is G-I-L-M-O-R-E. Oh, that's also my Instagram. And I do have a website called mentalhealthpsa.com. That is M-E-N-T-A-L. H-E-A-L-T-H-P-S-A dot C-O-M. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much for all that you are doing for our kids. I like to praise and acknowledge all the teachers out there and everybody that is teaching these young people because without you, nobody will be where they are. Teachers are very important. So... That is the end of the show. Again, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and this is Interconnected, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Please stay tuned for future episodes. Take care. You've been listening to Interconnected with Dr. Raina Gilmore. Join the conversation each week as Dr. Raina explores the mind, body, soul, and spirit connection. Take a journey that will lead you to a path of healing, learning, and how to cultivate and manage your life. Here on Dr. Raina's Interconnected. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company. 